So let me begin by talking about FTP. FTP is nothing but file transfer protocol. What happens is your files are stored in a different server and marketing with the help of uh, some import activities in case of import or export, depending on what activity you perform, you get that data into that server. So a use case would be, for example, uh, we spoke about creating your data extensions, creating of manual records, but that's not what happens in real world. Real world, nobody creates manual records. We are talking about hundreds and thousands of subscribers in data extensions. That happens only either via APIs, you push that data in and out of Salesforce Marketing Cloud via APIs, or what you can do is you can use the services of FTP. So if FTP is one of the commonly used method to import and export data out of Marketing Cloud, how do you do that? Let me just yes now it's visible so okay this is this is just for uh, un knowledge purposes this is not re relevant probably relevant to a lot of people over here but uh, since it was asked i'm just simply showing you how it is done so if you see if you go to setup over here we went to setup this is the admin part not applicable to everyone it's done by your salesforce or salesforce marketing cloud admin guy what he does is comes to ftp uh, setup over here setup search for an ftp you get an option for ftp account click on that so this is the URL for that FTP server and this is the port number. Okay, these two informations are already available, will be available to you and the users might be or might not be created for you. The user which is trying to access the server. If that is not the case, in my case, if you can see it's already created. The user I name would always be your account ID, that is MID and the passwords you will set. So if there is no user setup, there would be an option over here to create a user for yourself. Once you create that user by simply entering this ID and this password, the user will be created. Now, the next step is to actually go and uh, communicate with that FTP server. So you need FTP application to actually access that. And I don't have an applica uh, FTP application over here, but the process, the application is like FileZilla. So now once you install FileZilla, what will happen is files, you need to FileZilla is a, is, a, is a application through which you connect to FTP servers and you can simply transfer file in and out of FTP servers. So in this case, this, this is the uh, URL. This is the port number and username password you have to enter in that. So once you do that, you get connected to this marketing cloud FTP connection. And once you get connected, you can import or export file. It's simple click and uh, intuitive UI click and drag tool. And you can simply uh, insert a file or actually export a file, simply click and drag. So that is something into Salesforce marketing cloud server or out of that. So once a file is kept over there, let's say you want to import a data extension, for example, about 100,000 records. And I think I mentioned it, we actually did it for, uh, let's say 10 lakh records. So 100, 000, sorry, uh, 1 million records, we did that. So once you go onto that, uh, take that CSV file, put it in the file, uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud server over here, this is the URL. Once you do that, you come to Salesforce Marketing Cloud and the place where it's it's it works is right now it's not uh, i checked it it's not enabled for me or it's not viewed but there's an import activity that you can create over here so i'm talking about import only right now so there's an uh, option under over here which talks about import interaction there is an option for import right now it's not reflecting uh, maybe it's not uh, enabled for my user this user which i'm using but there's an import option and what you do is simply go there and configure it for uh, for for the this import of this file of let's say 10 lakh records and what are the important fields in why so next step was i was talking about an import activity that needs to be created over here so there is uh, there is an option for import over here in this or under email studio which is not reflecting for me right now so once you go over there you simply create an uh, import activity and you run that what is what are the variables or factors that are required to actually run that oh, sorry configure that activity name uh, name of that activity of course but apart from that important things are file name so now the file name could be absolute file name or it could be relative so for example you can use some regex wherein you can say uh, if the see on a enterprise level it will be like every time the file is imported you create an activity and schedule it so the file normal creature will change but it will the absolute name will change but it, that for example version will change or date will change so that will be helpful for regex so you name that regex over here and then simply save that activity and run that the data will be imported in that the data extension to which you point while creating that activity so that's how you do it for import activity via ftp similarly while exporting technically the process remains the same you export what you do is basically as soon as you go to a data extension i'll just see data extension that thing should be viewed subscriber that option should i think we should get it so that i'll show you quickly over here so let's say i'll select this data extension how many records are there oh this is all subscribers sorry 
okay this is the one for me export and see over here you have two options to export browser download or ftp so you select this one and you create an activity similar to this and this file will be dumped to the file server the ftp and from there on with the help of filezilla you can actually send it to any directory in your local one or your external one so that's the process in brief about using ftp to actually import and export files or any kind of files into salesforce marketing cloud okay okay so let's move on to the next one which was about sap okay so has anybody sir heard about sap over here sender authentication package that's the full form sap so let me just brief you what sap is so sap is nothing but uh, a package as the name suggests sender authentication package it's a package it's a package of four things okay four things which you buy you have to purchase it externally from salesforce and you have to get it configured with the help of raising a case from salesforce so that is something an admin part and when in a real life scenario for all of you it could be configured or not configured in the beginning only so not all of you would be doing this activity but since it was requested i'm actually just elaborating on that in this or by the way it's not there in uh, bot or it's not uh, enabled so what sap does is basically it provides you an authentication it says that in email world authentication is very important to create a reputation so the package if you buy that package with the help of that you can actually enhance your reputation how there are four namely four things in that so let me go back to my ppt where is sap so is uh, sap and dkim authentication similar so dkim is a part of one of the package of uh, your uh, sap oops okay. that's the wrong one so basically there are four things in sap i'll just quickly show you here one is your private domain four parts of this package sender authentication package account branding dedicated ip and reply mail management so what we are saying is if you want to buy a private domain a private domain would be something like saying you get an email from let's say uh, email do not reply at grammarly.com for example the email that you get all the businesses have that so the, if that kind of uh, things you want to do then you have to buy a private domain which is only belongs to you that and why it will be helpful so what will and all those uh, sender profile authentication sender id domain keys dkim all these dmac things will actually be a part of this package and authentication will happen via that so that is the private domain so you it gives you a good brand image the email is coming from grammarly rather than some gibberish name at the rate of salesforce.com i'll show you that account branding account branding is something same authentication there is authentication at the back of it dedicated ip what is dedicated ip dedicated ip is or the option is single ip single ip oh sorry shared ip what is shared ip a lot of people are using the same ip shared ip and dedicated ip is only one ip you have so depending on the use case some people buy it some clients don't in my previous experiences generally people uh, clients buy it if they are big because you have to pay an amount and a very important thing dedicated ip wise if you have got a dedicated ip that is you are the owner you are supposed to actually make sure the reputation of that ip when i say reputation how the other isp see that see a email coming from that do they do they are they skeptic, skeptical of it or they believe it that reputation it's up to you to build so that is called ip warming ip reputation you have to make sure that it's up and good that you are aware that you are take care of it if not then it has to be done by the salesforce shared ip thing is salesforce is responsible so that's okay you shouldn't be aware, aware, worried uh, too much worried about it and there is something fourth thing called reply mail management reply mail management is you can actually uh, if somebody replies to your email where does it go which email, email box it goes to so for example if if you buy it a domain what will happen is if uh, grammarly sends an email to me i reply to that email the email will be email id would be something like uh, customer service at the name grammarly.com otherwise it will be some other email id that you configure it could be user as well so those kind of flexibility is allowed if you buy a uh, sender authentication package which is uh, and to be honest uh, coming to leaning towards the billing side of it it's mix and match so depending on if you want you can buy a dedicated ip separately not necessarily you have to buy this package from this whole package all four things so you, you can pick and choose amongst these but i think private domain and account branding are a part of it but rest dedicated and reply mail management can be bought differently depending on your relationship with salesforce and how it works it's very uh, we don't have a 
preview to that but that's what i've heard in the market you can actually buy it separately if you want to buy a dedicated ip i'll just give you a small example of what happens if you use this i'll quickly come back to my grammarly example and i'll show you what is the effect of it and how it, the awareness increases i'll open that my favorite grammarly email and just quickly show you can you make the screen 100% again so can you see this grammarly email correct it sent it's info at send.grammarly.com so they have bought a domain which is which is like this which says like that what if i don't buy it what if i don't buy it what will happen is i'll show you another example how it looks like then you can make mind yourself so i mean put yourself in the shoes of the subscriber if you get emails from first one and the second example that i'm showing whom would you trust think it from that perspective so this is another email okay i'll zoom in point noted this is another email that i actually uh, send it to myself from the org that i'm right now demonstrating from so don't go on any other this thing it is just a plain simple email so see how the id has come across can you see that via bounces.s10.exacttarget.com so that is what will happen so salesforce what do you say fine prints will be there in that so compared to both of them which is more uh, trustworthy would you say the first one first, first one right? so that's how that's why it, people actually choose you using that but since it is uh, it's expensive as well so not all the people go for it but this is good to increase the market awareness brand awareness about you as well so just a small example of the package because this is something related to ui you can see but as a subscriber of course you will believe the first one you will increase the trustworthiness will increase because of that so that is one of the factors of using sap okay yep okay so now we'll move on now we have covered the topics for your uh, sap and ftp we'll move on to uh, our core topic of the day which is about content builder or creating emails okay uh, one more thing uh, just since i saw this okay i need to make it 100% again okay so content builder so if you see these are approvals as well so do you use approvals in your uh, real life scenarios approvals no no we just use content builder okay. and that to so tell you, uh, email okay. studio not specifically going to content builder okay by the way both of them are same so i'll show you i can show you if it opens so i'm at the mercy of internet and marketing cloud yeah great can you see that same thing yeah okay so content builder is basically built for that and as i told you it, there's a transition from exact target to salesforce and the exact target is totally different to salesforce product so since salesforce bought it they are trying to enhance it they are making it better strength putting more firepower behind it so email future is content builder only so try and go it from here it's there as a part of email studio as well but you should use this as i said uh, this was remember we spoke about uh, email studio where to go for data extensions content contact builder is also there which is much more powerful than the one in email studio these are the future of it i mean uh, you should recommend clients using this rather than the old one to be honest because in the future all the new functionalities or the firepower behind this platform will be under these menus rather than the old ones but so okay so what the reason i wanted to talk about approvals was in the real life scenario okay in enterprise case you will use approvals okay in enterprise scenario i tell you why if you remember the business units uh, hierarchy that we spoke about so what will happen is uh, in a real world example there would be separate teams and please let me know if you have seen the same thing because that's how it should happen in the real world example with the clients there would be a team of marketers campaign managers who will be doing more of a business side who will be running the campaigns there would be a team of content managers who would be creating the contents who will be creating these emails probably a lot of people from your team belong to that category content you will bring the email templates you will create the content and all those things then there would be people who will be admin making being the admin of the system which are technical people so and then then there would be some business users who are, who are a part of this system so these are the typical team structure in uh, any organization digital marketing organization so say let me know if you, that is not the case you have seen in any video clients but that's that's how it should be it, the teams are very small but they are divided amongst that so approvals are very important i'll tell you why and I'll also recommend to your client see it's it's about recommending and consulting the client helping them to do 
the best out of this system because uh, to them you are the uh, SME of this system. So help them understand that approvals are important from a very uh, it, they are important from the perspective of legal as well as uh, brand awareness perspective. So the reason I'm saying is you create an email content for example an email good email but there's some spelling mistake for example I'm saying somebody needs to go and approve that email. So there has to be a double check because you are sending this email to let's say 100,000 people. So what will happen to your brand awareness if there is a spelling mistake or if the data is wrong? So approvals should be enabled in any organizations. People should use that. So the content team who is creating the content should create a content, but it should be approved by a, a level of uh, L1 or first level of managers who will be approving that. And then, mm -hmm. then only anybody can actually utilize that content. So marketing cloud does it automatically. You just need to configure those users. So let's say uh, somebody in the team, let's say me, me Pankaj creates a content. Uh, Chintan is set as an approver. So it goes to Chintan only when he approves that then only uh, the marketers in the team can utilize that content without that they cannot. So that's right. that best practice. You should actually uh, help your clients with that approval should be there because it's it will impact hundred thousands of people and if it goes out without due scrutiny or approvals uh, the results could be really bad and embarrassing yes uh, further into that uh, approvals i think there is one more feature that could this approvals would offer that uh, it can be managed and it could be used by a different team as well so right am i correct yes so what we have done for specific clients to be honest we have done it on a user level I'm pretty sure you can create a team and actually assign it to the team level as well. But what we have implemented for a specific users because generally the team marketing team is very small. They're like not more than 10 15 people in general and the Salesforce expert marketing cloud experts are very less in number. So we actually utilize it by doing it user specific. Yeah, yeah that's fair enough, right? Yeah, some of the, free, some, of the subscribe, uh, some of the users can only view it. Some of the views uh, from the marketing team just can uh, upload the content and some of the team can uh, utilize that content and build a new email template from there. They can schedule a campaign, some sort of thing like this is what the approvals can offer, right? So approvals is a part of this whole uh, roles uh, access and visibility. Okay, so this is a this is a component in general. It's called access and visibility. So yeah. approvals is a part of also a part of that. I mean, technically not approvals is different thing, but what we're talking about good that you brought up that point. So uh, this is again an admin part, but Salesforce marketing cloud with the help of that you should give this proper access to users. So for example, in a content team, only some people can upload the images. Only some people can edit email templates. Only some people can approve it as approval workflow. Only some people can view that whole everything. So for example, some someone like business will only view that. Somebody from content management team can have read and write access to it, not delete. Yeah. Nobody should be having delete access. So in our Salesforce world, we call it cred. Create, read, edit, delete, cred, C-R-E-D. So that's a general term that we use. So that access has to be provided by someone in the admin team, has to be defined in the beginning and provided for the users based on whatever business uh, use case that they have. So that should be there as a part of that because otherwise what will happen is same problem just like approvals this thing also won't work i mean if somebody is giving an app option to delete by mistake he has deleted deleted it your content imagine your content gets deleted and you are about to uh, go on a marketing campaign email campaign what will happen so so to avoid all those gaps and uh, issues you should actually initially before implementing as a best practice again recommend to the client we should be very clear with who will play what role and what kind of access he should have so that metric should be prepared and circulated to the client and get a buy in and as a consultant you should do that yourself you should recommend yeah. client that these users should be having this this user should be having based on our industry experience and best practices this is how it should be done and then based on their specific use case they can make a change but you should do that in the beginning of the project beginning of implementation I'm not sure how much of uh, it is applicable to a lot of you but yeah this is how you should actually uh, think from a perspective of what you can do a value add apart from the technical things that in the system that is there. Yes, okay? perfect. A quick question. Looking at mm -hmm. the magnitude of Salesforce, mm -hmm. does it offer any sort of data recovery options? Once, uh, I mean, if something is deleted, it is deleted forever. So what kind of data? You're looking for contact data or this, this content any, data? Yeah, contact and content as well, both. Okay, so, okay. so I'll start from the last. So yes, you can recover that. But okay. the problem is the problem is if you delete from let's say I'll take example of contact even if you delete that by mistake I'm saying there's a last resort to 
go to salesforce okay uh, just for uh, since you have brought that point i wanted to understand has, is anyone aware how to raise a salesforce case how it is done why it is done i briefly touched upon that but in the system is everybody aware how to do that raise a case against salesforce okay so i'll just quickly give you a glimpse it's very important because if you want to get a feature enabled if you want to do something uh, and this is not enabled so for example if you see in email there is not uh, approval is not enabled for me so that needs to be enabled if it is an access issue that's a different thing but if it is something that is not been enabled from salesforce side you need to actually uh, the way it's done is raise a case against salesforce a ticket against salesforce and salesforce team will actually uh, the ticket will be assigned in, in a day or two you should be able to get that access if you have paid for it or if that is uh, the case i mean i'm assuming you have bought it so salesforce will uh, enable it for you so the way it is done is again go over here salesforce help and training click over here always try and ask why why are we doing it from the clients try and understand from that perspective not all the times you will have answers or you been the situation to get an answer but try and understand for any one of you in the team over here because i'm presuming most of you are from html development background probably pretty early in your uh, career paths always from anyone if you are implementing a service or implementing a functionality why are we doing it this way because there could be n different ways of doing it so always try and understand from that perspective and try and recommend a better solution there could be a better solution because there are 10 different ways of doing a particular thing to so try and do it try and think over is it the best way what will happen if tomorrow something scales to a level of right now you are only uh, sending emails for example to let's say 5000 people tomorrow it could scale to 500000 people people is your solution that you are implementing would be scalable would be good enough would be manageable by the client so always think from that perspective and then actually work on the solution that you are working on think from that perspective because at the end of the day this solution whatever solution has to be robust scalable when i say scalable it has to go from uh, if you want to increase the bandwidth let's say 5000 to 500000 emails per day is a system or the configurations that you have done are scalable will support that and on top of it try and come up with solutions which are out of the box don't use custom solutions first thing that you should recommend or think of is cust- uh, rec- uh, out of the box solutions don't get into coding every time or uh, let's say for example here i'm just taking a blank example uh, if you are creating an email template don't just think that e- i'll create it with the help of email because if you are more better at email e- uh, sorry html it will be easier for you to do that but always think from a perspective of the customer now today you have created it and given it to him something happens tomorrow and he wants to replicate it he wants to make some change into it that means he has to have a capability of html coder with them which means cost to them that's not a good approach try and come up with out of the box solution use the standard out of the box features given by salesforce let's say in content editor and try and do that if it is not feasible then only jump on to custom solutions in this case html coding for example javascript whatever the case may be so try and get to a place where there are no options out of the box then only recommend any custom solutions don't go for custom solutions since you are good at that or this is the first thing that comes to your mind think from a customer perspective everything is money to them so if they do html right now it's not scalable they need some some expertise after some time as well which is money and they won't like it so think from that perspective so uh, okay coming on over here help so we were clicked help and training so my page is loaded if you come down see all the documentation and getting started best practices is there for you everything is there trailhead link is there so if you want to raise a case so this is the member id company passcode and everything support and services click over here and then obviously it will tell you that uh, you have lot of documentation ex- or some se- uh, v- workshops as well but if you s- want to so right now it tells you mc premier success plan so this is success plan in which there are s- tiers of success plan uh, or l1 l2 if you want to call it wherein uh, it depends on which plan you are the, n- the time it will take for salesforce to revert so click on create a case so it will first of all it needs to drill down what all it is required so let me say send email no no i want to talk about the content management so see it gives you cloud pages content canvas landing pages microsoft smart capture i was looking for an option or example if there is something to do with admin you need to select this okay let me select for example for the sake of simplicity click on next it will give you a lot of options keep on selecting and drilling down on your problems and then finally it will as it will create a case to you and once it is creates a case you will be getting regular emails so you can chat with them on emails or if you want to get inside this uh, place and then 
uh, revert to them you can add different people as to that email chain so you can converse with them on emails only not required to every time you come inside this interface and talk to them or rather in response to their email so that's the way to create a case in salesforce okay understood if you want to get a feature enabled or something of that sort a support from salesforce use this and they will revert in let's say according to your plan it should be two days two business days they'll take to revert sometimes they depending on the queue sometimes they revert early sometimes it takes time but yeah that's how that's the way to go and you can raise a case okay okay so let's come back to our content builder so this is a typical screen for content builder everybody is aware of this screen correct the folder structure correct so what i was saying was this screen is pretty standard to you everybody is aware how people are using content uh, these are the folder structure again a best practice please create folder structure which are relevant to you okay to your use case to your business enterprise so a typical case would be for example a marketer's team would be creating content so they will be having their own folder so for example i am a marketer team i create content so it will be pankaj's content for example which is identified and viewed it could be or a biz or some other team is creating a content so, so one of the team members uploading images only uploading content images and all those things so he can create a folder structure for himself a folder and start inserting images in that uh, there's one more thing which is not viewed over here which is called shared okay if you go through a business unit structure that we spoke about you can share the data amongst your business units okay because that's the whole uses of business units you want to keep the data separate but also you want to share it as well some data so if you i'm not sure is it the access thing or is it something to do with the, the not a business unit created since we are only have one business units a single one uh, there is also an option for shared folder over here it comes somewhere over here and if you put any content any data over here in a folder structure in shared folders the data can be viewed by any business unit so let's say there are four business unit for example all of them can view this shared data okay so that is one of the good use case since it is not enabled or i don't know whether it's just because of the fact that there's no uh, hierarchy created in this system i'm not able to view that but you should get if you work in your client's organization and if they have business unit enabled you will for sure get shared folders option over here and if you click that it will be similar to this the structure that you have created but it can be viewed and accessed by anyone in all the business units so that's the use case for that shared folder structure okay uh, is a business unit something uh, you need to set up when the account is bought and uh, we are you know we are setting up the initial uh, thing or is it something that we can do any uh, later on at any stage you can do it later on technically yes but as a practice you should start from the beginning the reason being of course you have a client hierarchy but then you keep on adding business and the, the hierarchy keeps on changing in real life life examples correct so that's the yeah. reason technically you can but you should start from the beginning so let's get back so we we could we could see shares fold shared folder which is utilized to share it across the different uh, business units okay so now uh, what do we do so uh, from understanding perspective i wanted to understand what you guys in this content builder do what exactly do you do there might be different profiles of people doing it but what exactly do you do in technical terms uh, like in terms of creating an email template right correct something like that so what exactly do you you create email templates you create upload files uh, what and do you testing as well what you do in your normal day to day operations for your clients so uh, basically what we do is that uh, in all our clients that uh, in the in the local folders or the shared folders there is an folder called email monks we create mm -hmm. a folder of the campaign name and inside mm -hmm. that folder there are three sub folders of images content blocks mm -hmm. and one with the main template right so Correct. all is sorted in that way and mm -hmm. after that we create uh, we go to create we create a free form block and we paste mm -hmm. the code over there and make content blocks and then we what is the code the so you you create emails directly out of html is it uh, no. no not from html template like, like the, uh, there is a base template we uploaded and then we okay. create uh, and we create content blocks out of it then okay so understood understood what is that last part i missed it we upload it what upload uh, upload the content blocks using free form like if you go into the you know okay. the create part and there is a option hmm. called create a content free block form. using free form right okay correct absolutely and i mean that's pretty much how in general the businesses work wherein uh, you create somebody does the email of sorry one of the folders covers all the images relevant images it could be sub folders as well uh, depending on the campaign and uh, this could, one of the one of the places could hold all the templates one of the places could hold for example uh, content blocks so 
depending on the use case but this is a general correct way to do that wherein you create for a campaign you create different folder structures which are identified identifiable as to what it what it stores so and i'm assuming this is the general uh, understanding amongst your whole team members no correct yeah okay so let's get on to this uh, real thing so what all you can do from this screen important rest all i spoke about this is very standard what you can do is with the help of create see what all things you can create over here so for example email message do i need to talk about it yeah 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 that's what i thought email templates email templates as well e content blocks content blocks is something i'm not sure how much of the functionality you are using like you spoke about free block again uh, whenever you get to create email templates my recommendation would be try and think if it can be accomplished with the help of these things over here if it if it is not then only go for html coding or custom coding try and think if it is possible if not then do that and so let me start with the button would button simple no i don't think so i need to go into that code snippet code snippet is something that can be used by you but i'll so i'll click on code snippet so code snippet is nothing a block which contains a code that you are using every time okay, okay. so for example any any code that you want to add over here any html code you add it over here save it with a particular name and then call it every time once you are doing a coding i'll show you where it is utilized let me show you how it is used so basically if you are doing a custom coding in the html editor you will get an option of custom snippet code snippet so from there you can actually pull this this thing so i'll just quickly show you let me save it over here let me put okay i'll save it and exit i'll go to let's say create a new email message let me select one of the blank ones so this is the a way to directly add a code snippet i'm just just give me a moment i'll let you know i think that should be a different type of email only i have selected a wrong I think email it's under the content that's what i'm thinking uh, i think i have chosen a wrong side type of uh, email to actually begin with it's actually logged to be honest because you are using a content builder email so it will lock the code yeah, yeah. correct that's what i was uh, okay you can try going to layout in the content layout room. type so you suggesting to create it via layout that's what you are saying Where, which one you are recommending just go to the same email you created i think this was the one content builder this one's the one isn't it yeah yeah now go to the no ideas. not this one yes i think I think it should be good in this yeah. now it's content the layout. the layout tab on the right side top oh, yeah and now go to the content content so this so okay this is yeah. uh, correct this is a way actually what i wanted to show you was i was trying just trying to figure out there's another way as well so this is correct absolutely okay it's already added so this is a content so what you are talking about is a content block that i had created a code snippet you can actually direct import it in while you are coding in the html so that's what i was actually trying to look at to get into a coding view when you would be able to see that so probably i'm using a wrong email uh, to begin with but yes this is one of the ways i was trying to show you a way wherein you can actually go into html part of it and there is an option to actually uh, select a drop down for snippet and this snippet can be imported directly over there as well another way of doing it S similar another way of doing it as i said couple of ways of doing it i mean whatever feels best to you that is what uh, you should utilize and there is uh, until as there is something with really wrong it's okay to use that code snippet dynamic content why uh, you know is there any good reason we create a code snippet we, we can also create a content block and do the same thing as well right uh, we can also create an html block alternatively correct so see these are content blocks are so first to answer your first part of the question you are actually creating a co content block which is of type code snippet basically html code correct okay. mm -hmm. so this and these are reusable components you can call it whenever you want wherever you want so these are reusable component and same goes with the html type as well so as code snippet the core difference is basically a single functionality that you want to talk about 
HTML could be something like a full functional page, for example, a full functional page that could be a technical difference, but nobody's stopping you to technically uh, interchange and use that. But HTML would be something like a full full page and course snippet is one particular functionality that you are trying to recreate everyone everywhere. Sorry. So that is the typical difference that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we came to dynamic content. What is the dynamic content? Uh, has anybody talked spoken about cases? Cases, you know what happens? Cases, anybody is aware? Case, how case works? In no. coding language, I'm talking about. Okay. So what is uh, in general for a case in any coding language? Cases is like if it meets a condition, it goes to first first block. If it meets a certain condition, it goes to the second block. If it meets a th another condition, it goes to third block. So based on that, uh, dynamic content is saying that in a use case would be. If I am of a male type, my profile attribute is of male type. In that case, show me a image which is about bikes. If my uh, data extension subscriber record is of female type, show me an image which has got, let's say, uh, I I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stereotyping, but uh, things related to uh, Kukri, for example. Stereotyping, but I'm sorry. So uh, this is a use case wherein you will be using diff and it can be more than one. So based on the attribute types, you can choose different content or images to bifurcate so as i said if to in a real world scenario if the email goes out to a subscriber who is a male he, he, his email will show the image of uh, let's say bikes but if it goes out to a female he she will so get to see the image of a, a let's say a cookery program or something of that sort that's the difference and it can be more than one so dynamic based on the variables the content will change hence the name dynamic content but this is a component that we are creating kind of component reusable component we are creating have you used this functionality anywhere till now uh, not no. yet okay so i'll quickly quickly just add one one image to that so that you are aware which folder over here will give me images em test 2 uh, you can use any of the images no so i mean, I mean newsletter one i don't want to use people's image uh you, which was you there. can go in internal practice okay internal practice uh the drop down the subfolders yes and then go in harsh test harsh test the subfolders yes email monks assets and you can use any one of them that makes sense so let's say i use this one first okay so this is a default one default one month means if you don't have a data for a male or a female for example then what you do you show this image that is a kind of default action yeah this male and female is always will have a value but in case uh, it could be a use case date of birth is greater than 18 let's say uh, you, you are more than 18 years of age certain image will show if you are less than 18 years of age certain image will show but then what if you are exactly of 18 years of age on that day a border case i'm just talking about so that default content will pop up nothing uh, too special about it but i'm just adding so rule one so these are the based on profile attributes what we'll take is data extension or audience based on the audience this will change so right now let's say for example i'll choose come on my data extension where is that okay this was the one that we created yesterday i made a small change in this so let's say uh, my uh, gender it's a simple one but you can play around G genders equals male come on okay ending and oring facility is there that we spoke about so you can do that kind of mix and match as well but in the interest of time i'm just going through saving you must select content okay rule one which content you want to show so we were over here and let's say we want to show this one and then save it so this is for rule one like this you can create rule two rule three depending on your use case you can keep on creating and adding images to that so you got the gist of it and save it of course and then you reuse it while creating an email template that i need not to show correct yep yeah yes. so so that is the use of dynamic content okay so whenever the year there is a use case in which there are multiple images based on the profile the attributes of that particular person subscriber try and use this block create once and use it try and use it so that would be easily configurable uh, one more thing in your, your line of business uh, you guys uh, do digital marketing work that i got to understand but you always work with clients which are less uh, conversant with the system or they are very tech savvy and they are well versed with the system so they would like to do it there amongst uh, themselves okay next one is your enhanced dynamic content enhanced dynamic content is another version of uh, a better version of uh, dynamic content hence the name enhanced dynamic content what is the use case use case is now we i'll just come to the earlier use case if the date of birth is between this and this show this image if the date of birth is between so there can be many instances many scenarios now 
you don't want to configure dynamic content manually for each case correct so if that is the case the system allows you to actually upload a csv file okay with those conditions and guess what you can do the same functionalities but with the help of csv so you can actually enter much more data so i'll just show you one example of it and then we'll go and upload that so an example so i'm i'll go into my trailhead as usual the best place to get the basics good and going uh enhanced content i'm just trying to show you use case because you haven't used it content builder features see this is all the information that is available over here so we can read and get 12 percent in case you are going into a conversation you should be aware what all can be done create dynamic content i think this should be a part of that basically i'm trying to show you what the excel will look like and so that you can utilize it okay yeah this is the one so enhance enhance dynamic content so it could be like the use case could be uh, the loyalty levels so if it gold silver bronze and based on that you want to tell in the email to the customers if you are of gold type you will get 25% discount on this product like that there could be many scenarios okay so this kind of functionalities can be achieved with the help of enhanced dynamic content how do you do that you create a csv file with this particular data and import it inside and then since it has a usable content you can use it while creating an email similarly technically it remains the same but uh, it's an enhanced version you can have many more scenarios covered so simple and I'll show you what is file that is created okay so i've just created a csv file if everybody should be aware i'm just added values to that and like this you can actually import it inside the uh, enhanced dynamic content so let me just come back to my example and that's the use for it enhanced dynamic content map so this is what i've already created and stored it so is there not now so see it is already uploaded see the same excel file that i had done gold silver 10% discount gold 25% discount see same thing has happened automatically in this got it so that's the use of it enhanced dynamic content got it yep okay without wasting a further moment let's move on what else is there external content links external con content is okay so this is the just the url that's it so external content external link obviously you can beautify it you can set do the setting but this is basically this is the url okay so you want to send a link uh, show a link every time so for example uh, for more information visit our company website like that that kind of reusable component which is external to that email you can create it over here that's it that's the use of it pretty pretty straightforward that's it so what happens is if you want to point in your uh, email to an external content external website in our case let's say google.com okay you just create and save it over here okay valid url it's validated it's a valid url so basically it's external content external website you want to point it from your email so that you want customer to go over there and this you are trying to create it as a reusable component of course by beautifying it aesthetically making some changes if you want but that's the pretty much use of it and that's and there is two options retrieval and uh, retrieval method you want to do it immediately or send time so basically if you want to show this this is a simple definition of that so there's nothing much important about it it's very simple to be honest okay so it's so a link the it's a link that's it nothing much right so the application for external content blog is what should be the right answer from from your side application uh, okay application okay the use case or application would be something like for example in each of your email templates if you get to say for example for uh, more details visit our blog for example or you want to point to a, another third party let's say um, i'm not sure facebook you want to uh, i'm not facebook facebook won't be a right example but yeah a third party uh, which is which you want them to visit and which you are reusing every time so every email for example you are creating a campaign in which you want them to visit their your blog so instead of pasting your link to your blog you can create this content and calling it click and drag after that so this could be one of the use case or application for this external content block that's it nothing it's a url uh, basically it, this content block will only work like a normal cta right we click on it and it will just yes. go on to that web page right correct correct so just a, another form of uh, clean form of creating a link on your web page okay yeah yeah what else is there after this image blocks let me go to that image blocks so basically blocks of image nothing else and which which are reusable in nature and you keep on calling them that's it 
okay so which are these images let's say i choose this one for example yeah you can actually beautify it you can do the settings if you want. so these are all i'm i'm actually going with the assumptions you are aware of block setting as an html editor that because this is your job you will be doing it in and out every day okay oh, by the way uh, one uh, remember i quick point i remember there is i'm not sure why it's not is not enabled or whatever whenever you create an email template or sorry email there are two views to that uh, mobile as well as desktop this right. is the anyways component i just uh, thought i couldn't see it when i was creating an email so i mean the, the the use is basically you can see right away how it looks like on mobile device as well so yep. we, I, it was not enabled so it I, I presume it's very important for you to have a look at the same time you're creating an email template so email sorry so i'm not sure was it not enabled or what was the reason but just wanted to let you know this is also a feature wherein you should see at the same time so this image is there it will be either you can see it in desktop form or a mobile form so it will show how it looks like how the links have uh, other links broker of any sort okay so this was uh html editor email so okay so use case again a image block you have created what is the use case or okay, use case could be for example you are running a campaign in which you are using a common image so for example uh one of the things that comes to my mind is uh bikes and i say bikes in the i got to learn late, very late in life in western countries bike means cycle bicycle so when i say bike it means this bicycle gears bike this uh, bicycles so uh, that image if it is utilized across different campaigns or it could be uh, some kind of a banner or a logo that image is utilized across all of your email communication to your client then it makes sense for you to create it and reuse it every time instead of actually up, uh, using it from the uploaded folder so that could be one of the use cases to use this image block mm -hmm. okay okay yes yep. okay and uh, what is next then okay image block image carousel okay anyone any idea what it is i i think it's a slider yes so these days on your website do you have any example right now i cannot think of anything but in in the websites uh, it's good to give a good look and feel if uh, images keeps on changing every couple of seconds you might have seen that website somewhere i cannot think yeah, yeah. of it right now to show you so that is what yeah, this image carousel is there yeah, we just click on the arrows and the image changes right or it does automatically as well without uh, manually somebody clicking on it, it there is certain timer uh, you can configure it i think it's 5 seconds in general you can actually configure it and it keeps on revolving it five let's say you have chosen five image it keeps on revolving automatically you need not even click it carousel social follow sorry layout okay layout styles again these are basic styles that you want to use in order to create and utilize it every time so the idea is basically uh, you create a layout which is specific to you your use case and you store it so every time you can use it while creating an email so let's say we'll take simple an example over here and you create this this was a two uh, block layout you add the add let's say code snippet over here i'm just randomly selecting things over here Assum assuming is that you are aware of the concept i'm just showing it how it's done an image block over here image block was the one remember we just created that image block or all those things einstein thing is not enabled for you but yeah that can also be enhanced dynamic content if you remember we had created so it's not there's no option so this is enhanced dynamic content so this is basically a, a, another way of saying a, a good template is created and you can utilize it every time for example you are using a campaign so campaign is out, outbound campaign for example it's about uh, selling a product again same thing comes to my mind bike that so a basic template would be there and you would be changing certain things on that you can create it over here and reutilize it every time you are using it make sense yep okay then what is the next one yeah social follow social follow is nothing facebook twitter all those common links are there so these days it's a common factor to actually uh, to make it as a part of footer for all the emails so like it will be facebook twitter linkedin whatever you want it to be so that's that's about it agreed move on if in case mm -hmm. we want to change the icon design or some sort of design change in this particular blocks that do offer can we do that oh for this uh, social follow yes social follow so but then on these standards the ones that i shown on these standards why would you want to make a change to this a facebook the way facebook is or the way linkedin icon is why would you want to make a change in first place because in certain designs that we uh, get it from the uh, customers they have a different mm -hmm. type of a for the particular email template so at that stage they might expect us to have only black and white 
icons or might they have only borders uh, yeah, square ones. square ones or some of sort of uh, only okay like that yes 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 so this sort of uh, expectations that they have but hmm. in certain if in case we want hmm. to use some other style that apart from this styles so can we do hmm. that like a custom logo so custom so if we, if it is a custom logo i mean uh, it's it is custom i mean as the word says it's a custom it will be a custom thing that you need to do with the help of html and other code so th this is pretty much uh, what it says over here right now uh, in, in terms of out of the box features and whenever okay there's one more thing i mean i'm not saying uh, say no to the client whenever there is a conversation around client forcing you to uh, go a custom way i want it this way only okay your first uh, reason your first uh, instinct or instinct should be to what is the harm in using the standard one so uh, in they a lot of consulting came, experience they normally came with mm -hmm. the answer that is the uh, the theme that we want to follow uh, this looks really good with uh, and going with the design that we have created for the template so this is mostly it has support. to do with uh, how their website is how their website looks agreed. so and, this might not be a good I, use case no agreed i mean this not might be a good use case to demonstrate what i'm trying to say but what i'm trying to come at a level is whenever you speak to clients okay don't simply take anything on face value i i understand in this case okay brand awareness if their brand looks a certain way it has to look a certain way you cannot help it correct but in certain cases i'll take i'll give you an ex a small example that happened with me so uh, the client was actually adamant that they wanted to use custom fonts this might be a requirement for you as well uh, there are certain out of the box custom fonts available in a drop down if you are using out of the box features to create an email they wanted to use custom fonts and mm -hmm. the reason that they were giving was uh, it looks good we want it this way it was not related to much of a branding thing if it was a branding thing then i we could understand it's a consistent thing and we cannot do that so again what we told them first was salesforce recommends using this type of fonts only it could be we recommended a font which was out of the box but which was very close to the one they were looking for and what we told them was a uh, couple of things are a problem if you go with this approach first of all it's a custom approach so let's try and avoid as much custom as possible try and use out of the box features reasons being it's scalable second reason to for example with the help of html you set some properties and you do those custom fonts for example if even if you do that what will happen tomorrow is somebody wants to make a change it will become for them difficult and how shaky this html is you make change one tag and whole things goes down in terms of ui so the, the there would be a cost and time and effort involved in if you want to make a change later on so that is the way i actually tried and in some cases it works convincing the clients no we should use try and use out of the box features because you have to pay for it later on or it will take time or you have to come back to us actually in order to actually get it changed and we don't want you to come back to us we want you to be the owner of the system use the system i mean we should come only in cases where you need help if you are not able to do that you don't shouldn't come to a consulting company or a digital marketing company if you want to do all these things you should be able to do that that should be our uh, agenda to be become a real uh, honest uh, what do you say consultant to them to because uh, it's not about doing business i mean sometimes it comes that it fine line you are taking the business away from you but it's actually if a consult if a company if a client trusts you believe me i've seen that business will come back to you in bulk so try and recommend whatever is the honest advice instead of uh, doing it that let's do it this way because there would be business try and do that it helps it helps to build yes. the credibility in the market as well yes we do it on a daily basis we do a consultation approach we use certain uh, base practices that comes across the email template production and uh, finding the any of the qa process and any rendering process uh, rendering issues that could find a loss along with we use google uh, safe fonts we always suggest them if in case a brand would expect the different type of fonts then we always have a fallback a fallback uh, fonts as well but mm -hmm. my question was specific uh, spe uh, specific for the uh, style that comes across on a social media social icons and for that where uh, apart from this out of box features clients certainly mm -hmm. uh, expect from us to have a custom styled uh, social icons mm -hmm. so at that Case, if in case we don't cater if in case we have to use the custom code coded block for that then this is the only case that we have or salesforce can offer apart from this out of box uh, features there is some work around on it 
No, so for now, uh, this is what uh, can be done with the help of out of the box features for Salesforce. That's that's fair. That's fair. And this is text is text. If you want to add that as a text as a block which is reused every time. So for example, uh, some kind of text about your company, for example, which is standard and static. You can create it and uh, store it over here and simply reuse it whenever you want. Same thing. And this uh, this editor. Whatever I'm looking at right now, I'm pretty sure it's basic. Everybody is aware of how to use that indentations and everything bold underlines. So yeah. I haven't covered it at all. Yeah. Okay. So now that was one of the things. Uh, again, uh, creating an email with the help of all these basic things. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about was okay. Has uh, I'm not sure how it happens with your particular client. The point I wanted to raise in the email template was about testing. Testing with softwares called Litmus. There are some external apps that get installed in Salesforce Marketing Cloud, like Litmus. It gives you views in like hundred different devices and modules and blah blah blah. So it gives you a good enough testing experience. So have you, in your experience, used any tools like this, Litmus, for example? Yes, uh, we have. We are aware of Litmus, very much aware of Litmus, mm -hmm. and we also use Email on Acid as well. If you have ever heard of it, it's Email on Acid. A you said yeah email on acid yeah. yes correct and i mean this is something that uh, uh, also comes as a part of recommendations best practices so for example i'm just telling you over here if you're speaking to a client you should recommend what are the over the top apps so i'm saying you should also recommend the apps apps are nothing but uh, you are you aware of apps and app exchange uh, scenario in salesforce in salesforce ecosystem is anyone aware apps and all um no don't okay. Think. Okay. The concept is the concept is just like App Store. Okay. App Store, you go. You there are some free apps. There are some paid apps. You go and download it and start using it. Correct. Yep. Same goes with Salesforce as well. Salesforce has a thing called App Exchange. Okay. App Exchange is a place where you can get a lot of free products. Okay. So for example, Litmus. Litmus is not free. That's for sure. Uh, but these kind of products, which are which might be free as well. You can actually recommend clients using those. So let's say it Litmus was free, for example. You can go to App Exchange and actually search for it and install it in your app with obviously due permissions and everything. So I mean, there are certain things that they Litmus does which you cannot do automatically. So these kind of recommendations also should flow from you. And the only way you know about it is you should visit App Exchange. So I'll just quickly show you what App Exchange is since nobody has seen it. App Exchange, Salesforce, Marketing Cloud. So it's a Play Store, just like Google Play Store or iTunes. That's it. App Store. That's it. So Marketing Cloud App Exchange. Simple. You can go over there. If there's free, you can install it. Obviously, with due permission from a client and everyone. But this, the reason I'm actually wanted to show you was this is all a part of recommendation. You should tell the client this is a free app available, or this is an app which can do your work that we are doing for very free or oh, very cheap. Sorry. So see these are all the apps out there in the market please take an advantage of that uh, let me take an example if there is something lead capture so for example this is a lead capture form just just taking an example i'm not sure how relevant it would be so in marketing cloud if you want to capture a lead automatically from facebook so so this is an app which is i'm not sure it's, paid. it's you can go to reviews and overview and they'll tell you how it works view wise so you can use this app actually to minimize your work. So that's what I'm trying to say. So there is an app out there. Somebody has created it. Try and use it. As simple as that. So another very important recommendation to the client. These are the apps out there. You can use that. Okay. You should yep. be aware of what all features uh, apps are available to your uh, relevant to your work, and you can recommend it. Let me see. Let me put an email and let me go ahead and see if there is an email. Uh, should be able to by the way it is a very bad email so please please don't mind it it's just something i was trying to do a couple of things into one uh, layout so that's that's why it's it's not at all uh, good but please ignore that okay how to sell, select a data extension or list to which this email needs to be sent oh this option is there i was talking about this i i thought i uh, i didn't see that but it's there what happened okay it went down yeah so i was talking about this option to be honest i mean while creating you can get a look and feel instead of testing it later with litmus and other devices uh, other apps so okay so okay quickly this is from there you select different data extensions and lists to which this should be tested is is it is it is it that you are aware of this so yeah, right. let's say you select yeah, yeah. 
So again, this is this is what I wanted to cover as a part of email creations, different things, best practices, and you obviously yes, you send a test email, get that email, and uh, check things. Uh, this is what I was trying to check everything actually whether it's working or not. Hence this lot of garbage over here in my email. But yeah, so that is what my agenda was about to cover email uh, studio content management tool.